and it's an honor to be here to help celebrate the films of Ron and Jemaine. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who's been to all of the film festival? Who's seen all the films? All right, thank you for people well tonight. We're gonna go back to 1992 with the Academy Award winning all them to the stage tonight, just like we did for Hercules the other night. Sound good? Yeah. All right, I want you all to chant with me. Ready? Ron and John. Ron and John. Ron and John. Ron and John. Thank you, everybody. I'm Ron Clemens. I'm John Muskie. Yes, thank you. This is, I guess this is the last one of these things. We've sorry to say, this is our final appearance on the stage. Like, this is our wonderful, I saw you've been here more than one night. Uh, Peter and Trish, uh, Robert and David and Dominique, all you people. So thank you for coming. And uh, it's been a thrill to actually see our movies on the big screen. We haven't seen all of this in a long time. Leading up to Moana, right. which will open November 23rd. Next day before Thanksgiving, please go. Please tell your friends. Please the film Disney Studio employed, generally speaking. We've been working on the movie, and it will be completely done next week. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's true. We, are, we have finished the picture on Moana, but we're still working on the sound. We travel to the Skywalker Ranch. Um, to, on, on Monday morning, yes, this is a crazy big place with the that George Lucas built, and we're doing our sound mix up there, and we're just finishing this week, so as of Wednesday, Moana will be completely done. It is not quite done, but uh, I hope you all go see it. I hope you like it. Like going back to Aladdin. Aladdin, now Aladdin, now there was a movie. Uh, <laughs> what was that movie again? Um, no, actually, Howard Ashman, when he was working on Little Mermaid, he had to deal with Disney to uh, do some other films, and it was actually Howard Ashman's idea to do a film based on Aladdin, so... Howard wrote a 40-page treatment and wrote some music for Aladdin, and they... Great Howard Ashman! Please, Howard Ashman. Uh, but somehow the studio wasn't liking the scripts that were coming out and all that. We finished up Little Mermaid, and... Um, and, and Howard finished up Beauty and the Beast, and... Yes. And, uh, and then we, we were actually offered um, three different projects that, that we might work on. At after, our next movie, after, 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 after Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Right. And one of those projects was actually Swan Lake, which is um, a ballet. Uh, but we thought that was too close to Little Mermaid. Um, the other project was a thing called King of the Jungle. And I don't know, whatever happened. Whatever happened. It had lions in Africa. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, did that ever come we, out? We, we kind of. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, but. Um, <laughs> can I go see that? But we. we we sparked to Aladdin because it just it just seemed Arabian Nights tales, fun fantasy adventure. We um, it, it it appealed to us a lot, and we liked what Howard had done. We liked a lot of the songs he had written, and uh, and so um, so that so that got going, and and um, and one of the actually first ideas. I well, actually, yes, I I suggested to Ron. I thought that wouldn't Robin Williams be great as the genie in the Jerry Reese did a wonderful film, Back to Neverland, where he used Robin Williams. It was in the parks down in Florida, and, and uh, he, there was a kind of a duck amuck like thing where Robin was transforming. I think that inspired us a little bit. We said, wouldn't Robin be great? And we, and we, we wrote a script. We wrote a script, and we wrote the genie as Robin Williams, uh, really not having any idea if he would be interested at all in doing it, but it was written very specifically for him, so if he had not wanted to do it... But the question was, who could possibly keep up with Robin Williams? He's, his voice track is so electric, so volatile, so mercurial, so all over the place. What animator could possibly have the stuff it takes to bring that to life? And fortunately, we found him, and he's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Goldberg! your own studio doing commercials in London when we when this first all came about, were you not? Yes, I had a company called Pizzazz Pictures, and um, that was a term they didn't understand in London very well. We'd have people ringing the doorbell and going, hello, is this Pizza Pictures? 
they've never seen Come on up. pizzazz before? No, they've never seen the word pizzazz before. But anyway, and you and I had kind of a relationship going prior yeah. to that. Susan introduced the two of us. Right, and I knew of Eric's great work. I had seen Eric's reel, I think, when he did stuff for Richard Williams. He animated at his studio where he did commercials. And they were the most beautifully animated commercials you could ever see. And so when we heard tell from Charlie Fink, I think, who was uh, in charge of development he at Disney. He pursued me for about a week, a right. year. Yeah. <laughs> and he said to us, do you guys think you'd be interested in working with Eric Goldberg? We well, yeah. <laughs> so we said yes. And uh, he contacted Eric and the rest, as they say, is history. Eric moved back to the States. He is, you t can tell, he doesn't have a British accent. He is actually from put one off. Is Cherry Hill, New Jersey? <laughs> He's, he's a New Jersey guy, I think. But, uh, and did you know? No one's here old enough to know, but there used to be a show, To Tell the Truth, where they would try and guess which of the three people was the real person. <laughs> Eric was on that show at the age of 14? 15. 15. 15. Wow. I was the real Eric Goldberg, and I was so small, my imposters were 10 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> they were just in the Eric, they were just. Uh, Eric was did anyone guess that you were the real guy? Did they guess you? No. Uh, two of them did. Kimmy Carlisle cheated. Okay, okay. I remember now. You're telling me that. But so Eric led a team of people, and Eric helped us when we recorded Robin. We were all there when Robin recorded, and then we transcribed everything that Robin said. Hours and hours. Hours, and hours. Robin would go in four-hour sessions, and he really never stopped. He was. He was. By the time it was over, he was. He was just drained and sweating, and still wanted to keep going. It was, he was amazing. But boy, did he spoil us for choice. He did. Oh so, we, so we made yeah, the scene that started out you know, a minute long, got to be 10 minutes long, but we, we would whittle it down later. We picked our favorite things along with Eric, and we sort of chopped them all together, and then we rewrote the dialogue going in and out that would make sense. It was amazing, really, that he could keep on story for 95% of it. It yeah. really was. He, he did yeah, the other 5% maybe will never be heard by anyone. <laughs> There were a few off-color ones here and there. You know, you think the genie's blue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the genie works blue, I know. <laughs> um, but it was fabulous what he did, and oh, what great. Eric did bring him to life, and really got to channel. Al Hirsch felt the great caricatures. Eric was really involved in helping design the movie Aladdin, because he really brought the whole idea of doing a Hirsch film. Do you want to talk? Well, yeah, uh, you know, you guys had Richard Vanderwind doing production design, and he was doing what I would call Hollywood Arabian, where very S-curvy, really beautiful background art. So I thought, well, what kind of characters fit in curvy environments? Curvy characters, ergo Al Hirschfeld, uh, who's, who was famous for those sinuous, sinuous curvy sinuous. lines. And he didn't know that I had appropriated his style for this <laughs> <film>. <laughs> We eventually brought Al Hirschfeld to the studio. We did. And uh, showed him the footage, and he did a lecture. At Absolutely. It was, it was a wonderful the time. The first time I met him was at the Museum of Modern Art Work in Progress Street. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Peter Schneider walks past me. He was then president of Feature Animation. And I'm standing there with my wife and my brother from New Jersey. And he goes, oh, by the way, you're Alan Dolly Hirschfeld's minders tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gushing sweat. Hello, Mr. Hirschfeld. It's coming out of the limo. And um, I just thought, oh my god, I hope he likes it. I hope he likes it. I hope he doesn't sue me. I hope he likes it. And, and uh, he loved it. He absolutely loved it. And, you know, it's great to be able, I mean, on that film alone, to work with two of your heroes, yeah, yeah. Williams, Al Hirschfeld, oh, yeah. oh my goodness. It was fantastic. So when you watch the film, try and picture Al Hirschfeld's drawings up there, and it won't, they're not a far reach from what you're going to see up there. There are two other people that we have with us, some of you saw them downstairs, that I have really gotten very little publicity, but were an integral part of the movie. When we made these movies, as we did on Little Mermaid, we hired Sherry Stoner, the wonderful Sherry Stoner, did live action reference for Ariel. So in the, the straighter human characters, um, like, like Ariel and the Prince, or like Aladdin and Jasmine, very difficult to draw and, and sometimes to have a consistent performance. And this was something they did going back to Snow White. They shot Mars Champion, actually young Mars Champion, and did reference footage where it was never traced or anything, but it gave the animators sort of a jumping off point. So we did that on Aladdin as well, and we want to introduce you to, to Aladdin and Jasmine, the two actors who portrayed them for in our live action. They, they, we're going to show some of their footage here tonight. They haven't seen this in 25 years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Willoughby and Robin Ritchie. Now, now, 
looking back, we'll show a clip briefly so they understand what we're talking about. Before we do that, what it was such an odd thing because basically they're performing, to, they're lip syncing to tracks by Linda Larkin and Scott Winder, and but they're doing and Brad Kane and Brad Kane as well, and they're doing performing. Yeah. So what, what what was your take on what you were doing at the time? Did it seem strange? <laughs> Really strange. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, probably the funnest and one of the easiest jobs yeah. as an actor. We were in this, uh, I guess it was like a warehouse. It was a yeah. studio. Yeah, it was somewhere. It was, it was WDI. I think we shot a lot of it there. Imagineering. There's a little. In fact, well, just to let people, I, uh, we have a clip, and I have a clicker. If I do this right, let me show you the first clip. I have, I have a few clips to show you, and we'll stand aside here a little bit. But so the first one is Rob, actually. And this is the line you're going to remember from the movie, uh, where he talks about how wonderful Jasmine is. You're going to see Rob dressed as a lead. Very simple sets, very pretty. <laughs> this stuff has probably never been seen. I don't think it's ever been seen anyway. So, so you're in for a treat here. So I don't know which way I need to point the clicker, but hopefully when I point it, here it goes. Let's see what happens. Ready now. He was there when we shot this with Rob, and he would give Rob notes, and Rob would help give him sort of a first draft of the acting. We did multiple takes, and then actually Glenn could look at this, and it wasn't Trace or anything, but he would just inspire certain gestures and attitudes. We have one of Rubina as well, and it's, uh, this one actually, I believe, is uh, with Nick Ranieri, who was uh, an animator with us, who, who was the closest thing we had to Jafar at the studio. So, <laughs> so I believe you're going to see, sometimes we pull animators in to do to do some of this. I was Phil. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's run this second clip. So you're going to see Romina and, uh, and Nick, and uh, you'll recognize the scene from the movie, I think. <laughs> Jasmine's doing her hair before the take. Ready, Jack? Ready, Jack? What do you remember about it? <laughs> Very little, thankfully. <laughs> we, we, when we kept, we auditioned, there were several actors that auditioned for both these parts, but in Rob's case, it was this boyish, the boyish leading man quality that we liked that really helped bring the character to life. And Rubina, she had this elegance that really, and she looks more like Merida. And I said, well, how's she doing playing Jasmine? But, but really, it was the way she moved, not so much her physical you, red hair and her you front hands, so we did as well. No, and that was the funny thing. I remember at, at like halfway through the, the, the work that there had been some mention that I somehow was a dancer. And I'm like, uh, no, not a dancer. <laughs> but she, uh, but she, she moved with a very beautiful lyricism. Um, Here we have a scene. Mark, Mark Hen was, was uh, the lead animator in yeah. Jazz. Mark Hen is a dancer, so. Mark was in Florida at the time, um, animating in Florida. Glenn Keane was animating Aladdin here. So it was this, this kind of weird marriage that we didn't know if that would work or not, that these two guys in different parts, of, but it worked. But to give you a, a sense of the great expense we went to convey this, uh, here is a scene of Aladdin and Jasmine uh, you know, getting off the carpet after they've done the magic carpet ride, and, and you're going to see production value you've never seen before. <laughs> And so here is the scene just after that where they actually kiss. But this is actually the, it says take two, but this is really the rehearsal of the great kissing scene they had on the balcony. So here's, here's their rehearsal. Here, Talia. We actually have 
We have the later take, and we can listen to the movies. Here, here's the, the sort of the real thing. <laughs> Yeah, we're ready. every six weeks or something like that. We would call them in and they would dress up in these crazy costumes. And we do have, just there's a couple more clips because there's some silly things that I want to show, but here's a and Jasmine actually on the rooftop. So you get to see Jasmine in her uh, disguise when she's out of the marketplace. Here, here, take a look. Yeah, <laughs> he was pantomiming, you know, running. You have to imagine a lot in this. And so here's a foot, here's somewhere really it tested their imagination. This is Jasmine and Raja when she learns that the kid in the prison was killed. He was put to death by Jafar. And so she's, she's, she's beside herself with grief. And you'll see her reacting with Raja, and we'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> straight faces in the middle of this ridiculousness. Here's, here's one of, of Rob with Abu the elephant, and we couldn't quite get an elephant into the studio, so we did the next best thing. I think we had a, a, a mop and a piece of nylon, but we'll see, we'll see that in the studio. Uh, I, I gotta push the button, here we go. Thank you. Ready, camera. And there's the back of Ron Clement's head 25 years ago. <laughs> he used to have red hair. It's hard to see in this thing, but it really is bright red. Um, Chad, so this is actually, no, this is one more clip, I think. Or actually, we have just two more shows. We have uh, Rob now reacting with Abu when he's a monkey. And notice the lifelikeness of the Abu monkey. David Weiss was a production guy. Is sort of helping work the monkey off to the side. So here's, so this is where the genie's saying, uh, Sit, you got the elf, sit down, you'll see him saying sit down. And here it is. Rob was struggling with this apple. Glenn Keane came up with the idea of Aladdin bouncing an apple off his arm, you know, that playful thing he does in the movie, you've seen it. And uh, it, Rob, it was a little hard for Rob to get everything timed right. So this went for about 10 takes. Fortunately, I don't, I'm not going to show all 10, but I think I've got about three here. So Aladdin is supposed to reach back and grab an apple. It was a little tricky, but you'll see how effortless Rob makes it seem as we do this. Hey, there's about three takes here, I think. Yeah, 
Performances, a little bit unsung heroes, I think. Absolutely, and they did expressions and did acting bits and improvisations that really influenced the animation. And they really, it's like along with you know Linda Larkin doing Jasmine and, and Mark Henn doing Jasmine. Robina was just a, really an equally important part of Jasmine, and uh, we were so lucky to have her. And Rob with Aladdin, his as I say, the boyish energy and, and sensitive and his charisma and Scott all that. Weinger, it, it was okay. Scott Weinger's voice and Brian Keane's and, animation and, and, uh, and Brad Keane. And, and, and Brad Kane as well. In fact, the singing you know, voice. We should just give the so singing voice. Like, I right. want to give you a chance to say something else. If you would like to say anything else, would you like to? I, uh, I uh, just that it was a great experience for two young actors who knew that these two would be the <laughs> ones that they are now. We probably would have been nicer to you. <laughs> <laughs> they were nice. It was just it's such a great honor to 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 be back with these guys and to have. This shared experience again. So absolutely, I mean, it was tremendous. Then, I mean, it's amazing to be working on on, on a, a project that you knew, you could feel the energy, you could feel the, the the creativity and the talent, the brilliance that was going on. You knew that this was going to be something really, really special. So it was exciting then. And I wish you had told us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they they did a great job. So thank you again, Rob and Rabina. And now one more person, please. Welcome to the stage. Another important part of life, ladies and gentlemen, the great. Brad Kane, singing voice. Hello. Hello. I love your apple work. I love your apple work. All your work and your work. <laughs> Sir? Brad. Mr. Ironically, Hi. Brad was a. Uh, were you a, a college roommate with Sam Levine or somewhere? Uh, what? Yeah. yeah. Sam, Sam Levine. Sam Levine was my, my college. Sam Levine we worked with at Disney. He was uh, originally a, I think a rough in-betweener and then he did storyboarding guy sort and then later directing and he did the show Pen Zero. And ironically, he knew you as they said, oh yeah, I was roommates with uh, this was after we learned this long after the movie, I think, that he had known you in New York. Yeah, no, actually we were roommates before before the movie even happened. You were. Yeah. 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 And I knew he was a huge, you know, he was a huge fan of Disney animation and so did when he draw back then? He did. Oh no, he drew he drew caricatures of us. He drew oh. caricatures of everybody in the dorms. And the funny thing is, I don't know why we're talking about Sam. Yeah, I know we should be talking about Sam. Talking about Brad Pitt, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Hi. So we, you performed uh, some music. Was it at uh, for Good Morning America in various places? This just in the last year or so, in connection with Aladdin's sort of anniversary. Yeah, they re-released Aladdin on Blu-ray last year, and and uh, I got the opportunity to sing again with Leia on Good Morning America. Just, and, uh, the, the great Leia Salonga, Leia Salonga. Uh, the brilliant. She's not here tonight. She's yeah. not. But well, that was probably just about a year ago, right, right now, I would It was exactly yeah, a year ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 we went on a big tour around the country, and um, we did Good Morning America. I did Univision down in Miami and sang the song in Spanish. And, uh, I, I don't I don't speak a word of Spanish. I speak hola, but I learned it because it's Univision, and you have to, you know, you have to sing to your crowd. Cool. Now, but didn't we also hear the story involving how many years it was since you had something when you sang to your wife, as I recall. Isn't there a story about that? Yeah, well, I, you know, I hadn't sang the song. Uh, since I did the song at the Oscars in, I think it was 1993. I didn't it was 93, sing, yeah. yeah. I didn't sing the song again, uh, the Whole New World song, for years and years and years, and people would ask me, you know, will you sing it with me? I have girlfriends and people, just anybody. I want. <laughs> people would say, oh, come on, just sing the song with me. I'll do jazz, but I do great jazz. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. 
Um, I wouldn't do it. It was very special, and I don't know, maybe I was a bit of a jerk. Uh, and, you know, but, um, but when I met my, my now wife, um, and when we've been married over 10 years, she asked, she, she made me promise her that, listen, I know you don't sing the song with people, but if we, if we, if we get married, um, will you sing it with me at our wedding? And, and so, the, so I did. And we sang it at our wedding, and it's, it's on tape, and it's, uh, it's beautiful. And you know, I, I'm certain these people would love to hear it. No, 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 I'm not going to sing the song. We don't have Leia. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have Leia. We don't have, well, I mean, if, if you'll all do the Jasmine part with me, maybe do a sing-along. You can be Jasmine, all of you, okay. Cool. Well, then let's try and do it. Let's try and do it. worked on the movie Aladdin. Are there any people that worked on Aladdin? I see. Can you please stand up, anyone that worked on Aladdin, please? She is seeing the movie tonight here for the first time. So I'm very excited. So thank you, Rachel, for making that possible. Thank you for that. That was great. This has been an amazing uh, been a very week, long week and a half. I think it's it's been it's been really thrilling. And tonight has been really really special. Um, yeah, thank, thank you all you for all. coming, all of you who stood in those lines and everything else, and for your support all these years. And uh, and it really means a lot to us. Really, we wouldn't be here without you. It's your love of the movies that has kept us going. And thank you to these great talents that we're fanning the stage with. They made these movies possible, and to the ones in the audience as well. Uh, we were very, it's a very collaborative art form, and the movies only succeed upon the strength of all the members, the artists that we work with. And they are brilliant, and we owe them everything. So thank them all. Thank and, you all. And, and enjoy. Wonders that is Aladdin. Thank you very much and enjoy.